Nickelodeon's Invader Sim is horrific. And I don't mean that as in it's a bad show, no. I mean as in there isn't a moment of the show in where one character or another is in some kind of horrible suffering. Someone is always having some nasty fate bestowed upon them, but it's all played up as part of a great human comedy. While no one ever dies in this show because it's a children syndicated programming, it is definitely a dark comedy. So what's the story? An alien race known as the Urken Empire sends one soldier to every planet to conquer it. The most incompetent invader is Sim, and he is sent to Earth in order to study and conquer the human race. On Earth he learns about friendship, family and good morals. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm just kidding. He learns that humanity is a stupid and disgusting species that deserves to be enslaved. Throughout the series, Sim has studied human behavior, tried to conquer the world, as well as destroying his arch enemy Dib. The show was created by Jonan Vasquez, that had already made a name for himself writing the comic book Johnny the Homicidal Maniac. Although, I do wonder whether or not the executives at Nickelodeon had actually read the comics before they actually hired him. Before I can delve into things like story, themes and animation, I think I should talk about the characters and man does this show have some awesome, awesome characters. My favorite is Invader Sim himself. Sim uh, probably has the biggest Napoleon complex in the universe. He thinks he can do absolutely anything and he constantly goes on these megalomaniacal rants which are really funny. And many times it is his ego that gets in the way of his plans. Sim has shown uh, to be a scientific genius but he doesn't seem to put that into good use. Often he misses even the most obvious of problems with his own plans. My favorite example of this being when he tried to get rid of an explosion that was moving in slow motion by speeding up the process. Yeah, it's very easy to see the flaw in that thinking. Sim has also shown to be very evil and cruel. While we never directly see him kill anyone, we do see him ruin quite a lot of lives in this show. What makes the character so endearing, at least to me, is how tenacious he is. It doesn't matter how hard a task is, he will still go at it. And it doesn't matter how many times he fails, he will still try. It's like Wile e. Coyote. You might laugh at Sim's failing, but at the same time you sort of root for him to succeed because he tries so damn hard. Not to mention how much he enjoys his work. In order to melt into the crowds, Sim puts on this horrible human costume that is just uh, a wig and a pair of lenses. Thankfully, most people in the show are complete idiots, so they don't even notice that there's something weird about him. There is, however, one boy that do recognize him, and that's Dib. Thankfully for Sim, Dib is also a paranoid U UFO nut that sees alien activity everywhere, so of course no one believes him. Hey Dib, doesn't this remind you of a fable you might have heard of, written by a Greek philosopher, has something to do with a wolf and a shepherd boy? What was it called again? Throughout the series, Dib tries to expose Sim for the alien he is, but constantly fails because God hates him. Everything bad seems to happen to Dib. One of the best aspects of this series is how it makes us root for both Sim and Dib. While saving the world is a big part of why he tries to expose Sim, the main reason is that he wants to prove himself not to be crazy and that he is a force to be reckoned with, but he is only faced with humiliation. Sim and Dib are actually very similar in many ways and in another life they would have become friends. But not here, 
Here they are bitter enemies and they love to torment each other. Sim's companion is a little dysfunctional robot named Gur. Gur is hyperactive, speaks nothing but nonsense, and is a total retard. And he is just so likable. He is just so cute, innocent, and funny that you can't help but love him. Dib doesn't have a companion per se, but he does have a sister named Gas. Gas is intelligent enough to see that Sim is an alien, but doesn't care that he tries to conquer the world because, as she puts it, he's just so bad at it. Gas is tough, creepy, and kind of violent. The reason I like Gas so much is that she isn't just some one-dimensional bitch. Sure, she can be mean, but she is not inconsiderate. She has standards. She is never mean to people because she is selfish or acts out. She is mean because they are annoying retards. Plus, remember in my Ruby Gloom review where I said how annoying stereotypical goths are? Well, I don't consider Gas a stereotype at all. Her biggest pleasures in life are pizza and especially video games. Gas was actually voiced by Melissa Fan, that you might remember as Ed from Cowboy Beeple. Talk about two characters you would never think to have anything in common, right? Then there is the tallest, the leaders of the Urken Empire. While Sim believes they sent him to Earth to conquer the human race, they really sent him there just to get rid of him. They continue to support Sim only to constantly make fun of him. They are cruel, selfish and not very smart. Actually the only reason they are in charge is because they are taller than everyone else. The last character and one of my favorites is Sim and Dib's teacher Miss Bitters that might just be the scariest cartoon character ever. All she talks about is how meaningless and horrible her students' futures will be, and how everything is doomed. It is also questionable if she is even human, since she quite obviously has magical powers and connections to the afterlife. She is just a lot of fun. While most shows tend to focus on friendships or romances, Almost all the relationships in Invader Sim are negative. Sim and Dib are arch enemies, Gas hates her brother, and while Sim uh, loves his leaders, they loathe him. The only tender relationship I could find in the series is that between Gas and her dad, and even there he's kind of neglectful. Yet the characters never come off as unlikable to me, and as the Looney Tunes noted, a lot of great comedy derives from conflict. Almost all the humor in this show stems from suffering and surrealism. For instance, there is uh, this one time when Sim replaces a guy's brain with that of squids and he starts wondering where his tentacles at. Or when Sim has to work in an alien restaurant and has to be in a costume filled with boiling fat. The more bizarre and cruel the show gets, the funnier it gets, and it also helps that the writers take every opportunity they can to make a joke. Well, almost. The only major problem I got with this show, and this might be because it's a kid show, is that sometimes the jokes are not quite as crude as they should be. Take this for example. In the episode The Wetening, Dib learns that Sim is allergic to water. He jumps into a puddle of water, the water splashes on Sim and Gas, Sim screams in pain and Gas says, I will destroy you. And nothing happens. Wouldn't it be funnier if Gas threw Dib in front of a truck or something? There's a few other moments like this uh, throughout the series, and it really pisses me off. The animation fits perfectly for this kind of series, with its thick outlines, sharp forms and dark colors. The animation style is actually very similar to another comic by Jonan Vasquez, titled I Feel Sick. 
There are actually quite a lot of references to other works by uh, Jonan Vasquez in this series. Jonan's self-portrait appears a few times and the sun actually have a face, and that face is the face of Happy Noodle Boy, a character from Johnny the Homicidal Maniac. The show ran for three seasons but was unfortunately cancelled due to low ratings. It was sad that the show ended when it did because unlike the first two seasons, the third actually had a running story. Another invader named Tack tries to steal Earth from Sim. After being foiled, she leaves behind a spaceship that Dib uses in his battle against Sim. I think if the show was allowed to continue, we should have seen a Tack return as well as finding out more about the secret organization, the Swollen Eyeball. Since its cancellation, Invader Sim has had a massive cult following thanks to DVD sales and merchandise. And today, Invader Sim's fan base is gigantic. It's actually my favorite Nicktoon ever. And yes, I have seen Avatar Last Airbender and Ren and Stimpy. I hope you have found my review informative and next week I will review Black Lagoon. See you soon!